Welcome back to my channel. I have been working on these artist playing cards for a swap that I'm doing in my Facebook group, Two Old Crows, and I generated them out of a master board. So they're similar, but not completely alike. And I would like to share with you how I completed them. If you want to join my Facebook group, you can find it here and Instagram, not so good at, but I'm getting better and I am completely redoing my website. So that's a work in progress. Of course, you know me, my name is Pink and I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I try to create videos that are short, concise, to the point. I hope you'll take a moment, subscribe to my channel, and of course that thumbs up helps me dramatically on the YouTube platform. And I always appreciate your comments. So I'm starting with a gel plate and I will put the paints that I'm using. You will see those appear as I use them in text. So I'm not going to speak to them right now because I'm going to have to go back over to my studio and look at the paint tubes that I use. So bear with me. I believe this is a um, chrome oxide green and a quinacridone uh, azo gold, but we'll see. You know, check the check the up above and see if I was right. But I kind of mixed that paint on there. I wanted to create a little bit of a background. And now I am laying down a second color with a stencil and removing the uh, paint that is in the open spaces. So I have the mask piece that I can put down on that background and see how that that looks. It's kind of, I guess, some call it a shadow print. Now I'm laying down some gold or a ghost print, I'm sorry. And I'm just cleaning that plate off with the gold. And I almost like that background as well. So there's the print that I received the first time. Let's do it one more time and put some additional color on the top of this. And I've chose a burgundy type color. And I'm going to do the same thing, remove the paint from the open spaces on the stencil and just leave on the plate what has been masked off by the stencil. And I will use that as the final color on this. And there you go. So I have completed two doing the using the same process. And let's clean that plate off once again with that gold. And I just have a piece of um, rice paper that I'm going to pull that off on. And I got a little uh, aggressive and pulled it off a little too fast. And I ripped that paper. But there will still be pieces of it that I can use. And now I have the two prints that I am comfortable with. And I don't think I mentioned before, but I am using watercolor paper. So this is watercolor paper, and I chose that because of the weight. And it will make that ATC card um, have a little more substance. I'm cutting it into the size of the ATC, which is 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches. And I'm just using my friskers to get that cut into the proper dimension. So here is the second piece. And I kind of refer to this as a master board. And I, I think that's the wrong terminology. It's just a gel print on a water piece of watercolor paper. A master board would have been collaged and stamped and all kinds of different mixed media things going on. This is just a gel print. Here is what I have come up with as the base for my ATC cards. And you can see that the um, Watercolor paper is showing in, you know, the edges, a couple of little places, but that's okay because we are going to really decorate these up. I have India ink gold that I'm putting into my texture paste. 
and my texture paste I make myself I'll put that um, recipe up above or I can link it in the description as well I'll do both and then you have it if you want it and I'm just mixing that in and it's creating kind of a beige color that I'm not overly happy with so I think I'm going to add some additional gold paint to this to see if I can get a little more of that gold color and I and I like the way that is looking much better but I want to pull out a sheet of paper and just test this to make sure that it I haven't destroyed the integrity of it by adding so much liquid to it and it looks like it's going to be fine so I'm going to go ahead and utilize it and let it dry and let it set up so I shall be doing that with random stencils on each particular card so each card will have just a little different variation once all the cards are complete I'm coming back in with some gilding wax. The cards have been set aside, they've dried, the texture paste is set up, so it is very sturdy, very cured, and I am adding this gilding wax over the top of that texture paste to add some gold dimension to the card. Now we have all of them ready to go into the next step which is going to be adding the diamond glaze. So I have this diamond glaze that I want to put over the top of each of these cards to give it that glossy feel, to give it a little more substance, to make it feel a little more substantial as, as a card. So to do this, I'm just utilizing my small little um, paintbrush here, adding the diamond glaze on in a zigzag pattern and just getting that from side to side and making sure that every square centimeter or inch of this card is covered. And I'll do that for each one and then set those aside and let them cure and dry. But see how nice that looks after you get that completed it just gives it a real finished finished look I, I think so now I decided that I was going to just write on the back of the card but now I've decided that I want to put some color on the back so I'm starting with a parchment color on this uh, gray khaki paper and I'm using that as my base and then I'll add in the colors that I used on the front of the card. But I wanted that parchment base foundation, kind of like the watercolor paper, if that makes sense. So now I have my foundations laid down. And I'm grabbing my paint and just laying a thin coat over the gel press. I'm going to pull out the stencil that I want to use out some of the paint that is in the open areas of that stencil and then I'll lift that stencil up take my base and pull that print and I love that coming back in with the parchment color and pulling up that ghost print. So there, there's two 
two prints that are going to be good to start with. There's the green that we have been utilizing, which is the chrome oxide green. And we're mixing that with, I'm not sure what color I mix it with. I, I'll put it in the, uh, not in the comments, but I'll, I'll do a text block above so you can see what I utilized color-wise. You know, it's funny, you do these, and then three or four days later, you come to do the voiceover and you've forgotten what you were using. So there is the peril of the, of the voiceover, if not done immediately after the project is complete. And what I'm doing here is just trying to create a background and get some interest on this paper so I can cut it and use it on the back of these cards to finish them off as the ATCs. Now we're just going through a, a secondary gel press printing process to get some color laid down on these backgrounds. And I took that kind of muddied um, up green background that I created with the combination of those colors and put the gold over the top with that stencil and I think that's going to make a pretty decent background for my for my cards and now I'll come back in with a little bit of that magenta and a little bit of the um, quinacridone as a gold and remove the paint from the open places in that stencil and then pull up that masked print on top of that. And I think we have the color combination that we need now for the back of those cards. So all of those colors are represented and I think it's going to look nice. So I take this one sheet that I have created and I'm gluing the pieces of watercolor paper that we have printed and hit with that diamond glaze and texture piece so far. And I'm gluing those to the back of this. And I'll let that glue set up and dry and then go back and trim it just with a pair of shears. So we'll set that aside and then cut off the edges here of the uncolored paper so we don't accidentally get those on the back of one of our cards and we'll take the remainder of the cards and finish that up on that second sheet of eight and a half by eleven or a4 paper and here we go with the trim after it has dried And we are getting into kind of the home stretch with these ATC cards, but there's still more to add to them and still more to do. So once they're all trimmed up and ready to go, we'll take a look at what we have. And then decide how we're going to put the name on, on the back of them. On the back of the ATC cards, I want my name. I want the name of my channel. I want the date that I created the card. I want a list of the products that I used to create the card. And I have chosen a paper bag and I'm ripping it into strips that are the width of my ATC card. And I have pulled out a microfiber pen, and I'm just going to write that information right on the piece of paper bag. And that will fit nicely. I'm just going to trim, tear, tear, trim, trim to tear, tear to trim. And I want to ink around the outside edge of that with some vintage photo and glue that into place. And I'm going to use my Mod Podge hard coat 
to glue that down because that's going to give this card yet another foundation. And that Mod Podge hard coat does dry with a little bit of sheen to it and a little bit of gloss, and it it kind of clinks when you when you drop the piece. So it puts a nice hard finish on it. And once I get them all coated up, I'm going around the outside edge of each one of them with a permanent it stays on black. And I want to use the permanent ink here so it doesn't um, rub off on people's hands. Because once it gets on there, it, it dries and it doesn't create a mess. Or it's not activated by moisture, I guess. So there we go. But we're not finished. There's more. So now we have them all in a kind of completed state. They we've gel pressed, printed the front, diamond glazed it, or put texture paste on it, diamond glazed it, flipped them over, created a second gel press print for the back. We've glued that into place, and we've added the name, the address, and or not the address, the name and the type of card and all that ATC information on the back with a paper bag. And that's in place now. We adhered that with a Mod Podge hard coat. So that hard coat has set up on there and given us a nice, good, solid foundational piece. And then once we had that all complete, we're going around the outside edge with that black ink. And now I've pulled out a glue pen and I'm just kind of dropping some glue on this and pulling out the gold flake and sticking that gold flake in those wet spots for it to adhere to the glue. And I'm going to do that on each card and I'm just very randomly adding some glue with this glue pen to adhere these gold flakes. And when you open up one of these uh, containers of gold flake, you need to make sure there isn't a fan or anything else going because these will go all over the place. It's almost worse in sequence, but not quite as bad, I guess. So there, I think that adds a little bit more to this. And I think I'm starting to be happy with, with the finished piece. So to finalize them, I have dropped some gold paint over on the side here. I'm going to add some water to that and just splatter across the back. So we get those little gold splatters across the back of the ATC. And now that that has dried, I pulled the bronze gilding wax out again. And I just want to go around the outside edges and just in random places add that little hint of bronze on the edge. And that is the final step of my ATC, these liquid pearls. And I have laid them all down 
and am just dotting a little drop of the liquid pearl in each corner of the description of the ATC. And I will let that dry. And that will complete this ATC. Now, what these ATCs are being used for in my Facebook group, I asked 10 people to participate and 10 people signed up. All 10 people will make 10 cards, mail them to me in an envelope with a self-addressed envelope of their own. And once I receive 10 envelopes, I will put one of each card in that self-addressed stamped envelope and return 10 unique ATC cards to each person. In addition to that, I will be taking one of each card and creating a video uh, show of, of the cards that I received to put on the Facebook group so all members of the Facebook group can enjoy that. So come on over and join us or stay tuned to my channel and you shall see that here and maybe get some ideas for your own ATCs. So once again, thank you for being here. My name is Peg, Two Little Crows Mixed Media. Please subscribe to my channel. That notification bell will let you know when I upload additional content. And I hope you'll come over and join me on my Facebook group. Bye for now.